What can you do with a mini PC that has an eight core i3 N305 processor and four multi-gig ethernet ports? Well, you could do a lot with it, it turns out, but where does it really shine and where could it fit in your home lab? This is the Dot X Nook Tech 7. Comes with a 12th gen Intel i3 N305 processor. Windows 11 Pro comes pre-installed and this flavor included 16 gigs of DDR5 and a 512 gig NVMe SSD. Some of the standout features here are support for up to 64 gigs of DDR5, if you can afford it, dual NVMe slots and four, count them, four multi-gig ethernet ports, which include two that are 10 gig, all ethernet. Dot X sells this as a compact mini PC that can also handle home server loads, firewalls, and general office work. After using it, I see it less as a desktop replacement and more like a small virtualized network appliance that happens to arrive with Windows on it. So let's talk about this guy. The enclosure is a full metal CNC chassis with an anodized finish. I mean, look at it. It's basically one giant heatsink, and the whole thing measures around seven by four and a half by two inches, which is about the size of two, three and a half inch hard drives, like stacked on top of each other. Inside, it uses hybrid cooling designs, which is the all aluminum passive cooling, plus, two tiny little 4010 silent fans. And this may not be a big deal for you, but the ability to remove the bottom plate without removing those rubber feet is actually huge. Those things never stick back on after you rip them off in the first place. Also, the front has these blocked off antenna cutouts, but there's no Wi-Fi card on the board and no place to like add one. So maybe this chassis is used for multiple setups. For IO, you get a 3.5 audio jack, two 5 gig USB-A 3.0 ports, two slow USB-A 2.0 ports. The video outputs are HDMI 2.1, DisplayPort 1.4, and a USB type C 3.2 Gen 2, God, that's a mouthful, that also carries video. So realistically, you could run up to three 4K60 displays all at once with this thing. That could make sense for a little digital signage hub too, if you want multiple screens off of one box. On the networking side, there's two 10 gig base T ports, so that's just plain old RJ45, using a Marvell controller, and then two two and a half gig base T ports on an Intel controller. And I love seeing this much connectivity on an entry level unit like this. So I've recently started benchmarking all of these machines that I've got or that are sent to me and ran this one up against the latest other mini PC that I reviewed, which had a six core Ryzen 5 and 32 gigs of DDR5. You'll see on the charts on the screen, but surprise, surprise, the Ryzen is clearly stronger overall, which is exactly what you'd expect from a higher power CPU. But where the Nook Tech 7 really wins is efficiency. During the Cinebench and Geekbench runs, it pulled around 46 watts at the wall versus over 70 watts on the Ryzen Mini PC. So the balance here makes this box ideal for a virtualized network device instead of a general purpose workstation. I would throw Proxmox on this and then virtualize OpenSense or PFSense as the main router and firewall. And then on top of that, add PyHole for DNS, um, Nginx as reverse proxy, WireGuard VPN, fail to ban Waza, and maybe a few other utility services as containers or small VMs. Most of these have super tiny footprints. So, eight CPU cores is gonna be plenty. Now, because this ships with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, Hyper-V for virtualization is an option if you're more comfortable in the Windows environment. But personally, I find Hyper-V adds a lot of unnecessary overhead as a dedicated hypervisor. But if you really want a Windows box that also runs a couple of lightweight VMs or WSL workloads, it can do that. But for a pure host, I would still prefer Proxmox over Hyper-V or even a full vCenter setup. 
and the thermals on this actually ended up being a lot better than I expected. Under heavy benchmarks, the hottest point on the heat sink on the top fins was only about 108 degrees, Fahrenheit that is. It got warm, but never too hot to touch. Cinebench and Geekbench loops kept it in that range without any alarming spikes. And even under those heavy loads, it still stayed within that 38 to 46 watt window. So for an always on mini server, that's very manageable. Dot X says that this box can be tuned for a wide range of operating systems. Like I mentioned, it comes with Windows, but can also run Linux, of course. And then some of the other OS's that I mentioned or applications like PFSense or OpenSense, OpenWRT, Proxmox, VMware ESXi, Unraid and more. And yes, you can get ESXi for free again. It's just more limited and more painful to deal with than it was before. Thanks, Broadcom. If you're willing to live with some of those constraints, realistically for day-to-day -day sanity, I still think Proxmox is the better choice here. That's just me. So if you need a compact, low power node with serious wired networking, this is a really strong option. It makes a ton of sense as an all-in-one edge box on a single host that barely sips power. If you're chasing high-end desktop performance, or heavy GPU work or built-in Wi-Fi, you'll want a different kind of machine. Also, let's be real about one more thing here. Yes, this supports up to 64 gigs of DDR5, but it has just one SODIMM slot. And with the price of RAM right now, you could buy two of these boxes for the price of a single 64 gig RAM stick. Seriously. So if you need a RAM heavy mini PC, your use case probably doesn't fit into this machine's turf. Leave a comment about how you would use this unique mini PC in the comments below, and I'll see you nerds on the next one.